Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we're learning to use the program GIMP to create scroll saw portrait patterns. This lesson and other lessons can be found over at scrollsawvillage.com. Look for the Village University Forum where you'll find uh, these videos, some written out instruction, downloadable source material, and of course classroom discussion where you could have all your uh, questions answered. So we invite you to swing on by and uh, uh, have a good time with it. This is uh, going to be number lesson number seven. We're almost wrapping up. It's an eight-part series, so we just have this video and one more video, and uh, we'll be done with the class. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about facial features. Now, last time I kind of left you hanging a little bit. I didn't really explain or tell you exactly how to create a scroll saw portrait pattern from the base pattern. And I've really done this for a couple of reasons. First, I just kind of wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to uh, uh, try it for yourself and seeing what you could come up with. Because we did talk about um, how to use the brush uh, tool. Uh, we've also talked about uh, the different uh, aspects of uh, portrait pattern, things like the lakes and islands and peninsulas and the bridges and uh, and all that other good stuff and uh, so we looked at the elements and I basically kinda let you uh, uh, go at it so I kinda wanted to give you an opportunity to give it a try before uh, seeing uh, how somebody else does it uh, so you're not necessarily feel that um, there's only one way to do it uh, there are uh, many different approaches and uh, your approach is just as valid as the next guys and the, uh, uh, the second um, reason is, uh, well, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to teach. Like I said, it was, it's, uh, it, you really do rely on interpretation. At this point, uh, you got to make the decision with, about what belongs in a pattern and what does not. And uh, so there's really no right or wrong way to actually learn to create a scroll saw portrait pattern. Uh, it just takes experience, uh, takes some playing around and experimenting and uh, trying it out. But this time we're going to be talking about facial features. I'm going to give you a few tips of things that I have come across uh, that will kind of kind of point you in the right direction and uh, kind of uh, help out on some of these question areas or some of these difficult areas that you might run into. And we're going to be talking about the different facial features like the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and uh, hair. And um, I'll give you some tips that uh, you could work with. So I'm going to open up the um, good old Captain Kirk that we're working with, William Shatner here. This is our base pattern. And uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to show you actually a really cool tip uh, that will make uh, your pattern making very so much easier and this is what I like to do. If you pull over your layers uh, palette uh, you'll see what we have is the uh, the original, the black and white, the curves, photocopy, and the pattern. These are all of our backups. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the original and I'm going to duplicate the original. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that all the way to the top to, uh, right above pattern. And I'll show you why I'm going to do this. I, I got to do this off screen if you remember right. My screen capture software doesn't like to play nice with uh, rearranging. So let me just pull it off screen real quick and uh, move it up. And you can see that my original copy is on the very top layer. Now the really nice thing why we have this here is because it makes a great reference photo. So let's say for instance we're uh, working on the pattern. Uh, let's go ahead and hide the original copy. We're working on this pattern and we're going to work on his, oh I don't know, let's work over here on his eye here. Uh, we could go ahead and uh, paint our design in and let's say we're kind of curious to be, what, what is that? What is that all about? Well we just come over here to the original copy and turn on and toggle on and off the switch like that. And it kind of gives you an idea of what is there and what's not. Now, as I flip back and forth, you can see this little spot that showed up in our base pattern. If we flip it back and forth, it's really not that interesting. So 
we could go ahead and white that out. We don't need that. And you could kind of toggle back and forth between your original and your base pattern and decide what needs to be kept and what it does not. So that is a great little tip. Uh, I use it all the time. I'm always toggling back and forth between my original as well as my base pattern and um, just toggling back and forth and using it as a reference photo and uh, deciding. It really helps me make my decisions on whether or not certain things that come out in the base pattern are important or not. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to talk about is the eyes. Now, uh, the eyes are often said to be the windows to the soul, and they've been saying that for 2,000 plus years, and uh, you know, if they're saying it for that long, there must be some truth into it, because uh, really, when, when you're creating portraits, if you don't get the eyes right, you might as well just start over. So the eyes are usually the very first thing I actually start with whenever I create a scroll saw portrait pattern because quite honestly if I can't get them right you know why bother doing the rest. So I usually work on the eyes first and make sure I get that squared away and once I do I feel confident that I can continue with the rest of the portrait and it will turn out just fine. So the eyes are a very very important part of the portrait making process. Now one kind of interesting thing about the eyes is um, you'll see this a lot in like drawings or paintings or photographs is this little highlight in the eye. Now this occurs naturally in this uh, picture of William Shatner. You can kind of see in the original. Uh, you can kind of see this little square. When the photographer took this, this was a professional photographer who took this picture, you could kind of see this little square right here. You could also see a little square right here. Here's a little trade secret. Photographers and cinematographers, people who shoot movies, will often place a light either behind their camera or on their camera in order to get this little highlight in an eye. Because when you add that little highlight, it adds a tremendous amount of life to that portrait. So that little subtle little dot in that eye makes that big of a difference that people will go through great pains to put it in. Now let me show you an example. Let me go ahead and get rid of this, these little highlights and we'll take a look at it without the highlights at all. Now you look, see how uh, dead and lifeless those eyes are? And now if we back up a little bit See the difference that makes? So that eye light is so very important in all portrait patterns, whether or not be uh, a human or animal, that eye light really needs to be there. And if it doesn't have one in the base pattern or in the photograph, I put one in there. Uh, I make it up. Uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's there, uh, you'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And uh, so for this highlight, we're going to have to bridge this over to the main part. So let's go ahead and grab our white for the paint. And just something as simple as that. Maybe I might square off the highlight a little bit. And that might be a little bit too much. So I'll just kind of pop it in like that. And that's usually all I need. Over here, I might go ahead and... Uh, make it a little bit bigger That's something like that that's what I'll end up creating and then uh, these other little highlights uh, this area here I might just go ahead and bring that down and around because if we look at the original right here is the white of his eyes so I'm just gonna go ahead and white all of that out but we'll go ahead and darken in this area because in the original that's actually part of his eye. See how I switch back and forth between there? And then this part down here I don't think we'll be needing at all. So, and we'll just go ahead and clean up this image a little bit more. But you can kind of see how the, the portrait's kind of starting to kind of come together there. Now another couple of things that I want to point out about the eye. Uh, the upper eyelid 
tends to be uh, a lot more shadow, mostly because, you know, it's right below the eyebrow. So there's going to be a natural shadow there anyway. And also our eyelid, the majority of the skin is on the top part, so you're going to have a lot more wrinkles. Now you can kind of see in this uh, picture here, uh, you don't really see a whole lot of lower eyelid. Uh, you can kind of see it in the original, but it doesn't really show up in the, the main pattern. Now, I usually don't add too much detail on the lower lid. Uh, if it's there and it's very prominent, yeah, I'll go ahead and put it in there. But if it's not uh, uh, really standing out, typically you probably won't need it. So uh, the upper eyelid is usually where all the detail is. So that's usually the areas that I darken most. Uh, the little corner of the eye, like right in through here, kind of it, it kind of hit or miss. It just really kind of depends on the portrait. Uh, if we look at the original, you know, his uh, the corner of his eye is pretty dark. Um, same thing here. So I'd probably include that. And um, so you can kind of flip back and forth and just kind of see exactly how that's put together. So that's a couple of things about the eyes. Uh, make sure you have an eye light. And remember that the upper lid is uh, a lot more heavier than the lower lid. So the upper lid is where you add all your detail. The lower lid very minimal if you're going to put it in at all or just ignore it altogether. Uh, so you could do one of those. Uh, oftentimes we'll have bags under our eyes. Um, if it's really a, a, a major feature of their face or are the little lines under under the eyes then you might want to consider it like Alfred Hitchcock you know he has those those crazy bags under his eyes and that's really what makes him uh, very unique so obviously you would want to accentuate that but um, you know Marilyn Monroe you know you're not gonna see that so don't even put it in there because it's just extra detail that clutters up the image and um, people don't expect it so let's go ahead and let's talk about the nose a little bit uh, the nose can be a little bit tricky because uh, really the nose kind of blends into the face pretty well and uh, there really isn't any sharp lines and uh, sometimes the nose shows up sometimes it does not now on men they tend to be a little bit more prominent just because uh, they're a little bit more um, oh I don't know if they're a little bit more chiseled or not I'm not sure if that's really the right word but they do cast a lot more shadow and obviously on this one uh, it casts an awful lot of shadow on the left side or on his right cheek uh, to show the uh, shape of his nose but typically right across the bridge it does kind of blend into the face. There's no sharp lines, there's no folds, uh, no real shadow lines uh, uh, to be made. Now men, you'll be able to um, accentuate that a lot more. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it with women. Uh, women don't really want their nose to be that well seen, so uh, unless it's a major a uh, very prominent feature of their face. Uh, I would kind of keep it kind of minimal for women, for women in general. Uh, for children, children, you typically only have a little bit of shadow, kind of over the tip of the nose and a little bit, not even really in the nostril, but just kind of a very basic line. Uh, women would probably be very, fairly similar, maybe around the nostril area, like around uh, where the laugh line would kind of meet the nose. Uh, you might want to do a little bit there, but don't get too, too carried away with that. Uh, men, you could get a little bit more carried away because that's character. <laughs> we like to think that as character. Uh, women, uh, uh, you'll probably be sleeping on the couch if you uh, accentuate that too much. So a little advice there. Um, lips. Lips are a little bit tricky because if you actually look at somebody's lips, they're actually a different color than the rest of their face. So a lot of pattern software or uh, any software for that matter will often uh, uh, accentuate those, it'll darken those uh, and create um, dark lip type areas. Now while this is true in real life, if you fill in the lips with a dark color, it looks like lipstick. So 
really just try to kind of uh, uh, hint at the lips as we can see here on William Shatner right up here is kind of uh, uh, the center part of the uh, lip here you can kind of see that a little bit uh, if we um, go to the original that's more shadow more than anything so we'll go ahead and keep that shadow in here but uh, let's say for this area here let's go ahead and bring this into black the way I would do it I was just kinda almost bring it in exactly like the way it is just kinda kinda hint toward the uh, shape of the mouth um, but not actually color in the lips per se and uh, so I do something Oh, I don't know, similar to this. Let me go ahead and do this real quick so you can kind of see and then you can kind of zoom out. It looks a little weird, so I'd probably uh, play around with it a little bit and uh, see if I can't get it. But you can see his bottom lip right down here. If we color that in, it will just make it look like he's wearing lipstick. And we don't want that. Now what we can do is... Um, kind of play around with the shadow below the lip which ends up uh, kind of hinting to the shape of the overall lip uh, which will work really well so so you could kind of play with that a little bit so uh, don't color in the lips if uh, if at all possible even when they're wearing lipstick yeah most of it will be colored in but they're thing with lipstick is that uh, when it's applied it's very shiny and it's going to reflect light so let's say William Shatner was wearing lipstick um, so if we had his lips like this and if we filled that in uh, it would look a little flat remember lipstick has a highlight so we would probably just add a little highlight somewhere in the center here uh, just so we could see um, I'm just going to zoom that out a little bit. Boy, that that just looks ridiculous. But uh, when you're working with uh, lipstick, uh, there will be a highlight on the lips. Uh, so make sure you get that highlight in there. And uh, that will help uh, give, your, uh, give the lips a little bit more dimension. And, um, and uh, convey the fact that uh, they really are wearing lipstick. So... For, so let, just to recap, uh, lips, don't fill them in all the way. Uh, just try to use minimal detail to kind of hint toward the general shape of the lips without actually coloring them in. If they are wearing lipstick, you can color them in to a certain extent, but make sure you leave room for the highlights so that uh, uh, it really looks like they really are wearing lipstick. Um... Let's talk about laugh lines real quick. Um, laugh lines, uh, men, you could obviously uh, really go and uh, use it a lot. Um, women, I wouldn't go too crazy with it. Maybe just right off of the tip of the no or off the uh, side of the nostril, or maybe the corner of the mouth, uh, unless um, unless their face is really wrinkled and that's really a part of their character of their face. I wouldn't get too carried away with it because it just it kind of pulls away from the glamour of women portraits so uh, just kind of be careful with um, laugh lines uh, you'll find that men uh, you could get away with a lot more than you can with women uh, uh, I think it's mostly uh, cultural but uh, uh, I, I find uh, doing portraits of men tends to be a little bit easier than doing portraits of women uh, that's just my experience um, let's talk about the ears. The ears are kind of interesting because, well, they are the most interesting. They have all kinds of folds and sharp corners and shadow lines. And there's so many cool things happening in an ear. But then again, it's just an ear. You know, it's, who cares? Nobody wants to look at an ear. So you'll probably kind of get caught up in adding detail to the ear and when people look at it all they could see is detail in an ear and you know the, it's an ear you know don't get too carried away with it so usually what I do for an ear um, you know I'll kind of hint at a general shape um, especially if I need bridges uh, you know you could kind of hint at a general outline 
Uh, this little fold over here, I usually put a little bit in there, and I usually put a little bit of an area. Typically, you'll have like a um, uh, a section like this in the uh, portrait uh, that I would just kind of throw in just to kind of give us some basic dimension. But really, outside of that, I really wouldn't do too much, you know. Um, remember, the jawline kind of overlaps the ear a little bit, so you could... Uh, bring the jawline up into it a little bit to maybe just add a little bit to this side here and uh, uh, kind of help indicate the general shape of the ear and as you can see the hairline kind of comes down here you could also kind of play with the shape uh, there as well uh, just to kind of hint at the general shape so you'll run into the risk of uh, creating too much detail in the ear uh, just put in the basic information and get the heck out of there because uh, you want people to be fo focusing in on uh, the portrait's face and not their ear. Uh, last part, uh, we're going to talk about hair. Hair actually is the most fun to do because you could pretty much do anything that you want. This is really where all the interesting shapes come from. And uh, so really just kind of go wild. Uh, you could kind of see in this area we have all kinds of like little squiggles that we can kind of work with. So just kind of go in there and just start having fun. This is really the area that uh, you could really play and uh, just really just get carried away. So I recommend uh, leaving the hair for last, mostly because it's the most fun. And uh, you could really just get really creative with it so uh, there's really not a whole lot to talk about with hair um, when you're dealing with somebody with white hair you're gonna have to rely on minimal detail to kind of accentuate that I did a portrait of Albert Einstein not too long ago I'll put it in the show notes but uh, he had um, very white and wispy hair uh, that uh, you can't really get any shadows out of so instead, what I ended up choosing to do is uh, add some basic line drawings of the um, of the contour of his hair, as opposed to actually trying to draw in shadows of the hair instead. Uh, those uh, that are bald will be a little trickier, especially if they have a little bit of hair, because uh, you're just going to have to choose very minimal amounts of detail to hint at the fact that there's hair and there's a lot of uh, a lot of suggestion happening when creating portrait patterns uh, you're suggesting that um, the lips are a certain shape you're suggesting that uh, the nose is a certain shape or the ear or if they're bald or have white or wispy hair you're suggesting where the hairline is uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of very small, subtle things that you could do to add a, a little bit of interest uh, to your to your portrait. So let's get rid of that. And um, so those are a few tips that could kind of get you going on your way. I also promised everybody that I'd probably be throwing together a video of me actually taking this portrait from beginning to end from the base pattern to the final cuttable pattern and I'll kind of walk you through that process and uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, you can kind of see me work uh, not to say that this is the only way to work but it is often nice to see how somebody else works and you can really just learn a lot just by watching somebody else uh, you might be able to f pick up a few tips if there's like some problem areas you weren't quite sure exactly how to tackle uh, you could uh, kind of see how I approach it. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to pound through that relatively quick. Uh, but uh, I will be publishing those out uh, probably over the, well, at least a day or two. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to kind of follow my progress. So I'm going to call her good. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, swing on over to scrollsawvillage.com. Look for our Village University Forum where you'll find these lessons and others. And I uh, hope you join us and have fun with your pattern making. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm there to help. Until next time, happy scrolling.